Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here and welcome to DCS World 2.7.7 and DECA Ironwork Simulations JF17 Thunder Module. Welcome to tutorial 12, BRM-1 Laser Rockets. Uh, the BRM-1 is the Chinese equivalent to the Western APKWS or Advanced Precision Kill Weapon System. Um, these are, like I say, similar, but in some ways different. They're a slightly larger rocket, uh, and you get 16 of them in a pod. Uh, they're 90 millimeters in diameter each, or 3.5 inches, uh, compared with the APKWS uh, rockets, which are 2.75 inches. Uh, these are otherwise identical, though, to APKWS, just slightly bigger. So uh, they're guided on a laser. You can use them pretty much exactly like a laser-guided bomb, which I've already demonstrated in the previous tutorial. Uh, and in fact, the employment is almost exactly the same, uh, the difference being that you're generally going to dive towards your target and launch these to maintain them within the field of view. Uh, of the laser. Uh, now they're quite short range. Uh, maximum engagement range is four nautical miles or eight kilometers. So you're going to have to be quite close to your target at launch and, and because of this uh, you're going to have a hard time launching multiple against multiple targets. You're, you're generally only going to be able to uh, launch multiples against the same target on a single pass. Although I've heard people say that they can do as many as three targets on a single pass if they're quick and launch at maximum range. So, without any further ado, I'm going to show you how to set the, the rockets up, because there is a little bit of ground setup, uh, much like there is with the laser-guided bombs. Uh, again, I want to call out the fact that DECA have decided to more realistically simulate uh, the laser codes on weapons than, than some module makers have. Uh, and so, for things like laser-guided bombs and the BRM-1, uh, you have to set the laser code that the weapon will respond to on the ground. Uh, and that has to be done by the ground crew. I think this is a really nice touch. Okay, so now we're in the cockpit and I'm going to show you how to do the rest of the setup. Uh, I've got the aircraft in nav mode right now. If I go main menu and then SMS page on the left, you'll see here that uh, as, as per default, the aircraft has uh, no weapons shown on the pylons. However, if we jump to the outside view, we can quite clearly see that the weapons are indeed present. So, we need to do some interaction with the ground crew, just as with the laser-guided bombs. I need to go to ground crew and ask them to update DTC data. Copy. Updating the DTC now. I'm going to open the canopy because they'll need me to do that. Open the cockpit. There we go. They've now opened the canopy. Well, sorry, they've now handed me the DTC. Let's go ahead and close it. And repressurize. Okay, and as before, we're going to go ahead and enter that cartridge and push it all the way in. Uh, now that it's fully inserted, the left uh, multifunction display will bring up the DTC locked message. Uh, I've actually not already loaded my DTC, so I'm going to select all on this occasion and press enter and wait while the DTC data is transferred to the aircraft. One by one, each of these bits of data will be transferred. And uh, of course, we now need to set up the profile correctly. Air to ground and air to ground two. Yep, that puts us into normal mode. And DTC is now locked. That's great. Okay, so uh, let's go back to the SMS page and now we can see all of our weapons. That's great. Um, so let's choose our profiles and we're going to choose a uh, direct BRM. So that's uh, profile number one for air to ground. And we will see, uh, actually it's not confirming the laser code to us here. If I go air to ground mode, there we go. If we switch the aircraft into air to ground mode, it confirms the laser code for us here, 1688. Uh, now, of course, uh, if you're playing in single player, that's probably fine. But let's assume that we're in multiplayer and we need to deconflict. Uh, as we did with the laser guided bombs, we need to go to ground crew, update laser code. Uh, you can choose the pylons or just say all pylons. I'm going to say all pylons. I'm going to say change all digits. And it's now going to ask me, first digit is always one. So we're going to go one, six, 
six. And uh, actually, change all digits. Yeah, hundreds. So it was going to be one, six, tens, six, units, seven. That's what I want. And now I say setting complete. Okay. Roger, stand by. The crew is doing it now. And if we wait a little while, we should eventually see that this setting here changes. Laser co ready. There we go. Okay, so I now have a code of 1667. So once I, I get into the target area, I'm going to need to make sure that uh, I set my targeting pod to the same code. Now let's have a quick look at the profile that we have here. We've got the mode in which we use the weapons in. Uh, BRM can only be used in direct mode, which basically means we fire the rockets directly at our laser spot. The weapon, of course, BRM in this case, it's the only air to ground weapon we're carrying apart from the gun. Fusing, you have options for safe, Electronic fuse. Uh, those are the only two settings we have here, uh, so we need to make sure that it's on E fuse. You can choose how many you're going to launch at any given time, so one or two. And if you're selecting two, you can salvo them. Uh, actually, that's the only option. Yeah, you can only you can only launch uh, one or both at the same time. Uh, we're going to leave it on two. And uh, break altitude. I'm going to set this to one thousand. That will give us a, a break queue uh, before we reach 1,000 feet. That should make the whole thing a little bit safer. Okay, that's basically all the setup that we can do of the missile before... The missile, sorry, the rocket, before we reach the target area. Uh, you'll see me in just a moment en route to the range. Okay, you join me in the cockpit of the aircraft en route towards waypoint 1, where we have a target set up, which we're going to attack with the BRM. Uh, one thing that I uh, failed to mention a little bit earlier, I just thought I'd bring it up, is that the BRM pods can only be fitted on the outer wing pylons. So you can only carry a maximum of two pods for a total of 32 laser rockets. But that's still quite a lot, so not a big problem. Okay, let's go ahead and get the aircraft set up. I'm going to pull my T1 switch aft, that's my master mode selector, and we're now in air to ground mode. Uh, I'm going to move down to the center display here, and I'm going to switch it to the WMD pod. So I'm going to go menu, pod, WMD7. Actually, let's bring this down a little bit more so I can see more easily. Pod is currently off. Let's go ahead and turn it on. It's already uh, set the sensor of interest, but uh, using the S1 switch, I could push that left, right, or back twice to make the center display uh, the one of interest. I'm going to go ahead and uncage. I'm looking forwards. I'm going to set this pod to slave mode, so it's now pointing directly at waypoint 1. Uh, I'm going to push uh, S2, or sensor control switch, uh, to the left, just to pop it into infrared mode. I'm going to push right to switch it into black hot, and I'm going to push forwards to go into narrow field of view. Uh, I'm now going to use the antenna or zoom control to zoom all the way down on this target. And there we go. I can now see the target area. It's in the process focusing. Just going to move the pod over the target and depress. I'm now in area track. Uh, I'm actually going to depress again. No, it's not going to go into point track. Okay, that's fine. Anyway, we now have a range to that target, 9.5, and we've made that our sensor point of interest. Last thing we need to do, we did change the laser code for the laser rockets, and the pod is still emitting 1688. So we press code, and we press 1... Six, six, seven, and now our laser will be correct. Uh, I'm going to leave the laser in automatic, which means when I fire the laser rockets, uh, the laser designator will automatically fire. And that is pretty much all the setup. I'm going to very quickly look over at the weapons profile just to make sure everything is still as it should be. Uh, mode direct, weapon BRM, electronic fuse selected, quantity of two, salvo, with a break altitude of 1000. Uh, let's go ahead and switch master arm to on. That's now confirmed. The rocket pods automatically power up and now show armed and ready is displayed at the bottom here. That's all that I need to do heads down. Uh, the rest of what I'm going to do can now be done via the HUD. 
Um, so as always, we have a, a diamond showing us the sensor point of interest. I'm just going to come out of active pause here. Uh, diamond showing the sensor point of interest there. And uh, the circle with the dot showing the current targeting pod position. I'm going to come out of uh, autopilot there. And we're going to enter a shallow dive towards the target. So I want to make sure that when I fire the rockets, the target that I'm firing on is inside this circle. The circle is the allowable uh, kind of uh, field of view, basically, for the laser rockets. So let's wait for that range to come down. We'll get an indication once we're in range. Maximum range, as I said before, is four nautical miles. I'm going to do a single double launch. There we go, in range. Press and hold pickle. Those rockets are away. I'm now pulling off to the right. I'm going to look down at uh, the targeting pod just to confirm that laser designator is firing. It is. Oh, and there you go. Those two laser rockets struck the target and uh, effect on target quite significant there. Uh, those, like I said, are slightly larger rockets than the uh, APKWS system. Uh, the Western system. So a little bit more boom. Uh, I'm not entirely clear on the type of warhead. Uh, so I, I don't know if you have options like the uh, multi-purpose penetrator uh, that APKWS has or if these are simply blast fragmentation. But uh, that is the entire employment there. That's how it's done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go off target for just a moment. I'm going to regain that altitude and I'm going to demonstrate that one more time. But this time I will go into the F6 view and show you the flight of the rockets. And that should be a bit of fun. Uh, so there we go. We've got range. I'm going to come back around. Let's get back on target. There we go. Circle in the circle, in range, fire, pulling back up, and I'm going to press F6. That's what they look like in flight. It's gone supersonic. Boom. These rockets are very accurate, uh, and like I said, bigger warhead than the standard APKWS or Hydra rockets. So a bit of fun. Uh, quite a, an effective weapon. Uh, I hope that you all enjoyed that. That is the entirety of how to operate the BRM-1 laser rockets. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment. It's a big help to me and to the channel, and I'll see you all next time.